In this tutorial, we'll go over the steps for creating this animation loop with a Python script in Blender. Hey, I'm Victor Stepanoff, and I'll be guiding you through this Blender Python tutorial. Let's get straight into the tutorial. As always, we'll be using some helper code. I've provided a link in the description under initial code. Open that link in your favorite browser. Hit raw. Select the code and copy it. Let's head on over to Blender and then in Blender select the scripting workspace. Hit new and then paste in the code that you just copied. Let's go ahead and run the script and the script will delete everything from the scene. Set a couple of parameters in the scene itself. Update the world shader to add some light. Select some random colors for our scene and you can check out the details of that above right there in the helper function section. Uh, and we'll be mostly working in this uh, create centerpiece function and creating new functionality right here. One thing to note is I usually use Visual Studio Code to develop scripts like this. I'll be showing you this tutorial in Blender, but I don't really use it for my main development environment. I have a separate tutorial explaining how to set up Visual Studio Code for Blender Python script development and you can check that out if you're interested. All right, on with the tutorial. The very first thing that we need to create is the Truche tile pattern. And to do that, we'll need to create a curve. The easiest way to create the quarter curve circle that we need is to use the extra curves add-on. It is actually getting enabled right here. And you can check out the definition of this function above in the helper section. But the short story of that is, we have this add-on that enables all these extra curves and in particular we'll be interested in the arc and I'll select that and then open the menu to edit it and I'll deselect the edit mode and update the end angle to 90. And that is basically it. That is exactly what we're, we'll be doing with our curve. I'll go back and then select the code that that was created for us here. And I'll just paste it in right into the create centerpiece function. I'll update this code. And here is the code. And let's go ahead and update that and run the script. And you can see in the center of our scene now we have our code adding this arc right here that we'll be using for our pattern. Right at the start, I want to start adding some parameters, like for example, the size of our tile. So I'll go ahead and define a new variable up here. This variable is going to be representing the size of our tile. And then the radius of our curve and the location for our curve is going to be calculated based on this. And I'll create a new variable that's going to define the tile pattern size. And it's going to be just dividing this right here by two. Let's go ahead and use that. I'll use that for the radius and then also I will use that for the location and I'll actually use the minus of whatever we just calculated and let's rerun our script and you can see that now we have our pattern going this way right this is already half of what we need for the curve okay now we need to turn this boring curve into something more interesting into a mesh with some volume. First, I'll do all these actions by hand. I'll, then I'll copy the code that will ge get generated as I do each one of those actions into our script. So the very first thing that I need to do is I need to extrude this curve. And I'm going to go into the curve properties and then go into geometry and then extrude and then extrude it by 0.15. Next, I'll apply the solidify modifier right here, set the th thickness to 0.1, the offset to 0. Then I'm going to take a closer look and I'll convert this curve into a mesh. Then I'll shade smooth and then hit auto smooth right here. And then finally set the origin to the cursor. like so. Go back. And now let's go ahead and copy all those commands from the info panel into our script. So the extrude, the solidify, 
thickness offset converting to the mesh shade smooth uh, with the auto and then setting the origin all right i'll just go ahead and copy that paste that into our script hit tab to indent everything move this back and i'll remove this line because that's extra that and let's let's move this and let's run the script and see what that gives us and you can see that now we're getting this interesting mesh all right we can actually create a new variable right here that will represent part of our tile like that and actually i can instead of using this bpy context object i could replace all these usages with that variable all right let's go ahead and make sure that we can still run this and you can see that our script is still executing okay now let's duplicate our object the same way as we would if we would hit shift d and then rotate this object by 180 about the z-axis and rotate 180 about that z-axis yeah like that and so now let's do this with our python code and right here i'm using a helper function that just duplicates that duplicates this object and it returns a reference to that object and then we just rotate it by 180. let's go ahead and run the script and you can see now we have this pattern already all right now let's go ahead and join these two objects into one and apply a reflective material to that and here's the code for that again i'm using another helper function that's defined above i'm providing a list of those two tile pattern objects and then i'm applying again another i'm using another helper function that applies a reflective material again i just don't want to spend time on going over each part of this this helper code in particular and uh, we're using the first color and then applying the roughness so where are we getting this first color or actually if we look into the main function right where when we're setting up our scene we have this uh, first color and second color so there's a helper function that that grabs two colors from a random palette that we've defined so let me just show you at least that part uh, so right here we have a set of color palettes we will grab a random color palette on each run and then we're going to select uh, two colors from any one of these palettes and then make sure that uh, for example right here we're doing that here and we're going to make sure that it's going to be two different colors because uh, there's a probability that if we select two random colors we might select the same exact color we don't want that we want to make sure that we can get a nice pattern each time we run the script so that's basically where we're getting the first and second color let's go back and uh here again that's where that's where this is coming from and uh i decided to uh also grab a reference to this tile object and then apply a name a new name to that object let's go ahead and run this and let's take a closer look and i'm going to go ahead and hit z on the keyboard and then hit rendered and again we already have some light remember i mentioned that we've set up the sky texture so that that's where the light is coming from and you can see that there is a pattern applied to our to our mesh all right okay let's keep things organized and let's move all this code that we've written right here into a separate function uh, let's define it above here and paste that in and let's call it create to shape tile pattern and here's that definition let's go ahead and call this function where this code was before we move that there so we're passing in the size and the context and uh, that looks like it should uh, work let's go ahead and run our script and you can see that uh, the script updated the direction of the light will be updating each time we run our script that's already automatically that's already written for us and you can see that the, the color also changed 
that's good okay that's working now i want to take one more step in our organization and start adding this into a collection so let's first create a new collection and here i've defined a new variable for the collection name and i'm using a, another helper function to find above that is going to create a new collection with this name and let me go ahead and pass that as an argument into our function right here and then as soon as we join those two parts of our pattern let's add that into a collection and again i'm using another helper function that adds the currently active object into a collection that we've provided uh, the name to that collection let's go ahead and run the script and watch the outliner right here as soon as i finish running we should have our tire pattern in a collection okay let's run that and now you can see that we have this neatly organized in a collection all right okay with this out of the way let's start animating this tile and i'm gonna go ahead and go up here and start defining the function that will that will define the animation and here is the function take a closer look and here is the function we're passing in a context and the tile then we're we're splitting up the step of this animation into four parts so we're gonna wait a bit rotate our rotate our pattern then wait a bit more and then rotate it again back into the original spot so we're gonna first insert a first keyframe we're adding a keyframe for the uh, Euler rotation data about the z-axis at frame one right here that we're using that then we're rotating this 90 degrees and again calculating the next frame using this step that we just got here inserting another keyframe right for this 90 degree rotation calculating some more of the frames again this is like this is the pause right and this is the pause and this is the rotation and this is the rotation as well so let's update that let me go ahead and call this right here and let's make sure to return this tile and i'm returning the tile here and then passing it right into that let's exit this full screen mode and uh, let's actually update our workspace just a bit I'm going to pull up a timeline here so we can see that uh, how the keyframes are going to be added all right here so you can see that nothing is going on as i play this animation right and uh, this should now work as soon as i run the script we should add this uh, you can see that the keyframes were already added let's go ahead and i'm going to hit space to play this and you can see we do that rotation, wait, and then, then do the rotation again. And that is basically the whole animation that we're gonna be doing. All right, let's move this back. Okay, let's keep things organized. And I'm gonna move all this code right here into to a separate function that I'll call create shade tile, pass in the context, the size, the collection name, and then return return the tile itself go ahead and call this and let's make sure that everything still works and okay yeah we got the pattern and then we got the keyframe set up all right this still is working and next we need to create a plane that our pattern is going to be on and for lack of a better uh, name i'm just going to call it tile platform and i'll define a new function all right here and i'm going to be just passing in again the context in the size and i'll just move this right here and now we have just one uh, or two statements in our create centerpiece and the platform the platform function right here go ahead and make sure everything is working and it is all right and the platform is going to be just a plane so i'll add that and then i'll add an empty to parent our plane and our pattern to that empty so it's going to be like organizing that from a hierarchy point of view 
And here is that code. I'm creating the empty, naming it, adding it to our platform collection, creating the plane using the file size, again, adding that to that same collection, and then parenting our plane to that empty that we created. And then also I didn't mention that I'll add a reflective material to this plane as well. I'm using the other, the second color, for setting the roughness to one. And then let's grab the file and let's parent that file to the empty. Okay, let's run our script. And you can see now we have the plane and we have that animation. All right, if we go into the outliner, you can see that we have the control, the platform control MT, and we have the plane and the file pattern right there. And this is our basic building block of our whole animation loop. Now we're going to take this collection and then use that to create instances of the instances of this collection to create a bigger picture pattern. Let's go ahead and return the name of our collection and let's create a grid of instances and rotate this collection as we're creating instances in random ways. Before I start going through the for loop, I'll define a number of variables for us to control where the tiles get placed, the instances of that collection. And here is that code. I'm defining a step and the step is going to be just the tile size on the X and Y. I'm providing a range. Again, this could be, this is an arbitrary number. I just like this, this particular size of the pattern. You can play around with this on your own and see what you get. Uh, I'll be setting the current, uh, the current location on the X to the step and the starting, uh, the starting location on the Y to the Y step. And I'll create a, another collection. So I'm going to be grouping all the instances that we've, that we're going to arrange in a grid into another collection. And you'll see why we need that in just a bit. Let's start defining the for loops that will define this grid. And here is the initial loop. We have these two for loops going on the X and Y range. Each time we go on a, another iteration on the X range, we're going to reset the Y to the starting uh, position, right? So we want to make sure that this grid is formed in an even way. And then I'm calculating the current location where I want to place the instance of our tile. Now, if I, I'm not running this script because it's not going to do anything much that you've already seen on the screen because we're not doing any, we're not adding any instances. And here's that code. We're using another helper function that creates uh, an instance of a collection that we've provided and, and we're providing a name and a location where to put the instance of the new, this collection and getting a reference to that instance. Let's go ahead and run our script. Oh, and I did forget to rename this. So that is not just a collection name. It's going to be the base collection that we're going to be using. So I'm using better naming. Of course, this might be a slightly longer name than I'd like. But anyway, I just want to make sure that I kind of document that the base collection. Let's run that again. All right. And seems there's an issue. Let's find out what it is. And the issue, of course, uh, there's actually two of them. First is that we're not updating the current Y and current X each time we loop over the over our for loops. So let's run that again. And you can see that we have this pattern already. And all of these are just instances of this right here. So if I start rotating this, you can see that it rotates everything uh, together. All right, let's go back. Okay, now let's add every single instance into our new collection that we, we've created and also apply a random rotation. And here's the code that defines that. I'm making the current, I'm making the current collection active and then adding it again to the collection that we've defined right here and defining a, a random rotation, either zero or 90, and applying that to the rotation on the Euler about the Z axis. And we're converting that right here. Let's take a look how that looks. Run it. 
And you can see that this is already an interesting result. And if you look at, into the outliner, we have all these instances of that single collection in one collection group right here that we've named. And let's go ahead and move all this code that we've created into a separate function. And I'm gonna select that, cut that. And then here's the function. I'm providing the steps, the range, and, and the collection, the base collection right here. And let's go ahead and return that collection name as well. And then call this right here like that. And let's go ahead and rerun this script. And you can see now we're getting the same results and the code is still working. Let's take a closer look again. I'm gonna actually go into the material preview so I can save some resources for this recording. And let me press space. And you can see that this is already an interesting result. And you can see that this animation is already working. You can kind of make maybe call it a day here, but I wanna make the camera move and make it a loop. And let's do that next. And to do that, we're gonna create an instance of the collection that has instances of the tiles, right? It's gonna be a bit of an inception, right? We're gonna be creating an instance of a collection that has instances. Let's go right here and define that for loop. And here is the code. I wanna create three instances. And the section step is gonna be the X step times the number of those tiles. And then I'm just looping right here from one to that count, creating the location variable, and again, using the same function for creating instances of collections right here, but using this particular collection name. All right, let's run the script. And look at that. Now, this is a very interesting color, but uh, you can see this first part right here. Actually, let me just rerun this, this is very wild. Okay, this is a lot better. You can see this, uh, right here, these are all the instances, but down here, these are instances of all of this right here. Pretty cool, right? All right. And if you're learning something new and enjoying this tutorial, make sure to hit the like button. I'll greatly appreciate it. And for the final step here, we're gonna be creating the camera and animating the movement of this camera. I'll go up here and go ahead and start defining this function that will create and animate our camera. And here is the code for that. And we're just using another helper function that creates the camera. We're updating the location based on the section step, the size of the each one of these sections. And we're updating the location again. And this was a, bu a bunch of trial and error on my part to select the proper locations. And this particular uh, works out for me. Let's go ahead and add this camera, this call to this camera creation function down here. Let's run the script and let's take a closer look. I'm gonna press zero on the numpad and you can see that uh, this is where the camera is pointing. We have some room here and some room above. Uh, right now, let me start playing the animation. You can see that the animation is going, but the camera is uh, stationary, right? And let's fix that right now. And here is the code for that animate for the animation of the camera. We're inserting right here. We're inserting the two keyframes, uh, the first one on frame one, and then the last one on frame the frame count uh, right here. That's defined in the context. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, we're moving the camera two times the section step. So we're, we're gonna, we wanna be located in the same location when we start and end our animation. We're making this camera active and we're interpolating uh, the movement of the camera linear, linearly. So the animation of the camera will be nice and constant, right? It'll be starting and ending with the same speed. It won't be slowing, it won't be speeding up and slowing down. Uh, this right here, this helper function that's defined above is 
doing just that. Let's take a look at where this particular thing is coming from. It's in the context dictionary, defined above in the helper section. It's defined right here. So in the scene setup, we're calculating the frames uh, that we want to use for our animation, the seconds, the length of our animation, calculating the frame count, uh, setting a bunch of other properties in the scene. And at the very end, we're creating the context dictionary, which contains the frame count and the frame loop count. And this is very important uh, to make it nice and seamless. If we would use this right here, then the first and last frame will be exactly the same. And there's gonna be a slight stutter. When you try to create a video with two of these animations back to back, it's gonna, play the first frame two times at the very end, right? And at the very first frame on the second animation, it's, you can try it out and see how that looks, but basically that's the primary idea behind that plus one right here. All right, let's go ahead and use this function right there. And let's run our script. Let's take a closer look and I'm gonna hit space to play and you can see our camera is moving. And you can see how it'll circle back at the very end. And like that, that's pretty seamless. All right. And there's one thing to note here. There's a number of helper functions defined above, uh, starting from right here, end of BPY. And I'm just going to select all this code right here. So that's a lot of code, a lot of helper functions that are helping ca calculate the hex color codes and then creating the, creating the instance of collection. So I'm going to select all that code that duplicates our objects and so on. So a lot of code right here. I'm just going to delete that. And all of that code could be replaced by all of these import statements. So I have a Python package that defines all that functionality so you don't have to copy around that functionality in between your Python script. And you can get this Python package via pip or a Blender add-on. I can show you right now. So this right here, and I have a separate video that will tell you how you can get this installed as well. Let me go ahead and run. Well, let me first, let me comment this out run this and you can see that there's errors, right? This doesn't work. Of course, I deleted a bunch of code, right? Let's uncomment that and let's rerun it. And look at that. It still, it still runs without all that code, right? It still creates this loop and all that functionality is hidden behind these lines of imports. All right, and if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to check out how I did this project as well. Thanks for watching.